Good morning. Hey, I'm Sharon with the Grouchy Goblin. We are about to get started on part two of our summer beach bum four by four uh, door hanger template. And this was our, um, this will be our finished product. In part one, we base coated and we got to this point here. So this is where we're going to pick up from today. And so I'm going to, let me double check, make sure that I am actually live and that people can hear me. Perfect. All right. So we'll go ahead and jump right into this one. Um, we're going to start by putting our template back on here with our carbon paper because we have to draw in some of the details now. So um, I'm going to start, I'm going to start at the top. So I'm going to lay my carbon paper across the top because what I want to draw in first are the mirrors, the roll bar, the seats, and then we're going to move that down. So I'm just going to line my template up on top of my door hanger. Kind of make sure that it fits in all the right places. You can just kind of feel around and make sure it's sitting where it needs to sit, that it's not off. Okay. And then we're literally just going to kind of draw in. We're going to start by drawing in these bars here. Just going to draw a line down. And then my seat is here. And I'm going to draw the bar across the top. Come around this side. And I'm just using my template. Makes it really super easy. Okay. And then I'm going to go ahead and draw this in here. I know where my mirrors are, but just for my folks that like to use the template and see each step, we'll draw that in. So then I'm going to come down here. I'm going to draw in my tail lights. And I'm just tracing in this inside black line. You can even take a peek and make sure that that is showing up and you can see that real clear. Okay, and I'm going to do the same thing over here. So I drew the line through here. Yep. All right, I'm going to go ahead and just put my dots where my smiley face is going to go. And now I'm going to have to move the carbon paper down. So I'm going to slide, just slide it down. I'm holding my template in place, just sliding this down some because I want to draw in this uh, license plate here. And I'm going to go ahead and trace in my flower. Now the flower is going to be difficult to see initially because it's sitting on black. So this you're going to want to trace a little bit harder. Um, add a little more pressure as you're tracing this outline because you're going to have to really look hard to see it on the um, on that black paint. Make sure that I can see it. Yep. And I am applying a good amount of pressure here. Even with this pressure, I may have to use my light because my eyes are bad. I'll show you that in just a little bit, but let's go ahead and get it drawn on first. Just tracing along the outer edge. All right, and then I'm going to go ahead and trace on these tire tracks also. They're just a chevron zigzag. 
Again, you're going to add a lot of pressure here on this carbon paper because you're tracing on black. The paint underneath will be hard to see. I'm pretty sure the camera probably won't even pick it up, but that's okay. I'm the one that needs to see it, and you'll see it on yours as you're following along. So, oops. All right. And then we're going to do this last one here. Now then, I think we have most of our details on. You'll see these little lines here. We're going to go back. Those are highlights that we'll add at the end. And that's, um, we'll come back to that. So let's go ahead and start with our, we're going to start with our license plate. Because we're going to draw letters on top of that. So I'm going to need that to dry pretty quick. So I'm going to start out with my half inch. Um, Da, 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 da. Flat tip brush. I'm going to dip it in my water. Let me grab a paper towel. I forgot that. I always keep paper towels handy to get my excess water off. Okay, and I'm going to dip it in that sea green color. Um, and we're going to just go along the edge here. And it's going to cover up this gray really well. I'm using the edge of my brush as my straight edge. I'm going to turn this a little bit. And because this color is so light, I may actually have to do two coats, but we'll try it and see. I'm going to use that straight edge to draw that curve around. I'm just curving my brush. That way you don't have to worry about corners. And as I go along this tire wheel here, I'm using that, that far left side of my brush. To make that smooth. We're going to do the same thing on this side. I'm just going to drag my brush along. I'm applying enough pressure that I can make a straight line with it. And I'm just going to curve my brush. Oops. Just like that. One more time down in this corner. Okay. Now we're going to kind of let this sit for a sec. Go a little bit more in this corner here. Smooth that out. There we go. Now we're going to let that dry for just a sec. Rinse out that brush really good. And I'm going to go ahead and get my lights on. Now, again, I'm using light colors. So I'm going to start with my white. And this is just Anita's solid white. And I'm going to um, I'm going to get a little bit smaller brush so that I can get in here good. Let's use we're going to use this. Um, it's a little it's probably a quarter inch filbert brush. It rounds at the top, but if you have a straight edge, that would be even better. And let's see, 
I'm going to paint this bottom part white. Make sure I don't stick my hand in that green. And because I'm painting white over this, I am going to need to put two coats on. So I'm just getting my base coat on for this right now. And I'm going to do this side over here, let that dry before I put my second coat on. If you try to put a second coat of paint on on top of a wet coat, all you're doing is moving the paint around. So it really needs to um, fully dry before you can really put a second coat on successfully. You might see a little bit of my pencil line still, but that's okay because we're going to outline this with our paint pens at the end. So you won't see those lines at all. We're going to draw right over those. Okay. Now, now I'm switching over to my, um, this is kind of like that hot pink. It's Anita's and it's Carmine, um, but any kind of hot pink. You could use red if you want. Again, change up the colors to fit how you want it to look. And I'm going to use this to do the top of the lights, but I'm going to turn my Jeep around. And I stuck with the same brush. This paint or this color is a little bit darker, so you probably only have to put one coat. And I'm still using the straight edge of the brush. To make my straight lines and curving at the top. Okay. So cute. All right. Let's do the other side. Same way. We have our lights on. Now I'm going to rinse that brush out real good. And I'm going to switch to a smaller filbert. Um, you don't have to have a filbert brush, but just a small brush because I'm going to start getting in here on this flower. And in order to do that, in order to paint on top of black, I have to paint it white first. The, if I paint um, in my original, I'm using the pink, the hot, this hot pink. If I paint this on top of this black, you won't see it, or it will dull that pink down greatly. So what you have to do before you do that is you have to paint it white. So I'm going to paint the flower white, and then I'm going to paint on top of that white after the white dries. So I drew it really dark. You probably can't see the lines on mine, but if you trace it dark enough on yours, you should be able to see them. So, and it helps that the sun is hitting just right this morning that I can see those lines really well. And this doesn't have to be super smooth and perfect. You don't want your paint to clump really, but you want to make sure that um, you're, you don't care too much about brush strokes and things like that. You're just as smooth as possible, just covering. Right now we're just worried about covering the black and you'll still see a little black through it that's okay the pink's gonna sit right on top of that and it will not matter
I love this design, but this is the, I love this flower on this design, but this is the most tedious part of this door hanger. It's just going slow enough that you can get in all these little curves. The first time I painted this, I had to paint it super, super slow to make sure I was getting in all the right things. But then when I went back and painted the pink over the white, I realized it hit all those little imperfections of the white. So you don't have to, you don't have to go quite as slow and worry too much about it. In case you're wondering, I pre-paint everything before I um, do a live just to make sure I like the colors and make sure that it's a easy enough design that um, that just your your beginner painter can do it if they decide to do that. Let's see. Oh, I need my wet wipes. And then my uh, more advanced painters can add shading and do all sorts of cool things to make it uniquely theirs as well. So You'll notice I still touch in the middle just to get the excess paint off. It's just a habit I get into. You take a lot of excess paint to the edge of a design and you're asking for it to flow over your lines. It has to go somewhere. So I try to get the excess off before I go close to an edge. That's why sometimes you'll see me hit something in the middle and just kind of leave it there. All right. So you can see how this flower is starting to come on here and it's starting to show up. You may still see a little black in the back. And like I said, that's going to be fine. That's going to cover up with the darker pink. This is just so that pink will pop. It will really pop on white much more than black. Um, it's like it sits on top of the color better. Oh, let me turn my volume down. <laughs> I thought that was on silent. There we go. I was taking my son to school today. Today is his first day back. And where he goes to school, there's a lot of traffic. Being homeschooled for so long, um, we're still not used to the morning traffic that we hit when we go to school. But we passed a nice, a nice four by four this morning. 
And he said, oh, I'd love to have one of those. That's what I want. I'm going to put a lift kit on it. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. Put lights underneath it. And I said, well, babe, you're going to have to get you a good job. He's like, you're not going to buy me one? I said, nope. Not until I buy me one. He didn't like that answer. That's okay. All right. Now, I'm also going to do white on the center part, even though I'm going to paint that that um, sea green. I'm going to go ahead and put my white base on because I really want it, that green to, to pop as well. So, so I'm just going to kind of lay this white on here. And I'm going to switch brushes because that brush is kind of frayed. I'm going to use something a little more straight tip just for this piece. This is just a, um, a fine tip brush. It'll help me draw a straighter line. And if you, um, if you find like that you don't, like say that these little this little flower here has uh, slim branches but has like uh, fatter tips at the end. If you find that you don't like the way that looks, just go in there once it dries and add a little black in between and you can touch that up really simply. I've done that a few times with this design where I thought, oh, that's a little too fat. This brush makes it much easier to get in those really tight spots. Much easier. So I always have an assortment of brushes laying around. Like I said, this is one of the most tedious parts of this design, but it's doable. You just take your time, go a little slower. So we got our flower painted on there. So now we're going to go back while I have white in this silver brush, my quarter inch brush. I'm going to go ahead and put my second coat on these lights here, specifically the white portion of the light tail lights. <clears throat> And I can still see the pencil through here, but I don't want to see the yellow through my tail light. There we go. I'll do this one here on this side. I know some people are saying, well, where's the fall things? Where's the fall designs? Well, in Georgia, it's summer till October, at least. Sometimes late October. But we do have some fall designs coming out in our Etsy shop. We've got some cute, cute stuff that we have out on our blog. So if you want to see what's coming, you can join us at um, thegrouchygoblin.com. And uh, we also have an Etsy shop. This is thegrouchygoblin.com. All of our templates we make ourselves, and we've added two new fall templates out there just this week. 
and I will be painting those here in the near future. I think that you will love them. They are adorable. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and let this dry for a few minutes, and I'm going to flip this around, and we're going to paint our roll bar black, our seat black, and um, let's see, is there anything else I need to paint black? I don't think so, so let's get this on here. Okay, I'm just going to use the edge of my brush again, my straight edge, and I'm literally going straight up. turning my brush on its side so that it's more of a straight line like this rather than flat. And I'm just going to use that straight line to draw that line there and fill it in. Here I'm going to turn my brush. I'm applying pressure so I can still have my straight edge. I'm just going to go off just like that, off the side. And then I want to make sure I'm painting my sides here. All right. We're going to come up here. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and do the seat while I'm here. <clears throat> See if I can get a little closer. Sometimes my angle's hard when I don't want to put my hand in wet paint. I'm starting in my corner. I'm pulling out. It's easier to pull out than it is to paint into your corners. Turning my brush on its side and making my straight line again. this corner also to or use my side to side side brush to get in this corner as well. Get a little bit of this and turn I'm gonna turn it this way so I can pull again out of the corner. It's not perfect, don't worry about it. You can go around it with a paintbrush or excuse me, a paint pen, smooth that right on out, okay? Now then, we're going to come over here and do the same thing. This part of my seat. Let's see, it looks like it goes up a little bit, so I'm going to smooth that out. And we're going to come around this curve here and just turn my brush and come down. Just like so. All right. Now let's get this roll bar across the top. <clears throat> Let's 
obviously this black covers up your pencil marks really well. If you paint your uh, if you paint your bar too thick and you just don't like how thick it is, you can paint over black. Remember, you just have to paint everything white first. So rather than try to make your line straight with black, you should just stop and let it dry, paint white, and then try to fix it from that perspective. Painting my edges as I go along. Because I hate hanging these things up and then realizing I don't have an edge painted. It drives me nuts. Nobody else will probably ever notice, but I do. I do on mine, so I always try to paint those edges. And I keep loading this brush up. You want a good amount of paint on your brush to get this line straight. The less you have to go over it, the better. It's just less chances for making a mistake. So you load up your brush good. Now I'm going to turn it this way so I can come back from this side. There we go. And right here, I went out just a little bit. So I'm going to drag that down and smooth it on out just like so. Let your brush do the work for you to make your line straight. Okay. And here I'm just going to go across. And then we're going to paint my edges. And you can see how quickly this comes together. This design is super simple. What else do we need to do? Let's put a second quick coat of this green on just because I want that to be solid when I paint my white on top of that. But because I had black, I'm really making sure I got that black out of my brush before I hit it with this soft green, sea green color. Black just would not be forgiving in that at all. So I'm just going to come in here and add the second coat. I don't have to worry about the edge super close because the um, paint pen is going to go around the edge. Try not to make you guys dizzy while I <laughs> spin this thing around. Angle is important to me when I'm painting. Let's see. Get this edge here painted. All right. Now we got that second coat on. So that looks fantastic. So we'll let this dry for just a sec. 
and I'm going to pick up my filbert brush, this quarter inch brush again. This is the little one. And I'm going to dip back into this hot pink and we're going to hit this flower. So <clears throat> this is really, this is where you want to go a little bit slower. You stuck my hand right in that green. Not smart. I'm turn this way because you're going to stay on top of your white as you're painting this pink on. And as long as I'm covering the white, um, you won't really see, you won't see any problems with it. If you get into the black a little bit, it doesn't, it won't really hurt. It just may be a little duller in that place, but it could also act as shading because it is a little darker. So your primary, your primary goal though is to stay on the white and just paint on top of it. Just like so. So. This part is a little slower. This would probably be a great place to add some music. And acrylic dries so fast. That's a good thing. Especially when you move it around a lot like I do. Less likely to stick your hands in something wet.
Now I'm trying to make sure that my pink has, a, I'm loading up my brush good because I want good coverage over this white. I don't want white to show through. So if you see any white coming through, you need to make sure that you have more paint on your brush, load it a little bit more. My edges on my flower are not smooth. They're not super smooth. Um, if you want smooth edges and you can't feel, you feel like you can't get it with the paintbrush, you can always outline this design also with your paint pen. It's perfectly okay. I feel like I should have my tongue stuck out. When my kids were little and they were concentrating, they would always be like, as they were writing, as they were drawing. One still does that from time to time. That means serious concentration going on. Taking care of the details. So cute. All right, so now let's rinse that brush out really, really good. Because now we're going to actually, you know what? I'm going to use the small brush that I did before. And we're going to use the small brush to get this middle stem in with the lime green. And again, we're just painting directly over the white paint. If you go off the white, don't worry about it. If it if you don't if you like the way it looks, leave it. If you don't like the way it looks, come back in with black after it dries and just touch it up a little bit. I hope the camera's picking up the colors on these because it's so cute together. around take a look yes there's a couple little spots I might go back in and touch up where it got a little fat there uh, with the black paint I'll show you what I'm talking about right here that, thin, that needs to be thinned out just a little bit that's okay no sweat on that all right so now what now let's let's hit it with a hair dryer real quick and make sure it's completely dry that way when I add my when I put my template back on to trace out the letters beach bomb, I'll make sure nothing smears. So cool hair dryer, cool. I mean, uh, you can set it on high, but just make sure the settings on cool so your paint don't crack. Get our carbon paper back out, set it on top, our template, <clears throat> lay it on here. You want to freehand this, you, you can do that. Um, you can just write the letters on. 
If you have great handwriting, you can do that. I'm going to go ahead and just draw these on. That way I don't have to think about um, placement, sizing, making sure it fits. And I'm not pressing as hard when I trace these because this green is so light, it's going to show right up. So I don't want to have to paint super hard over it since I'm painting these letters white. So I don't want the pencil marks to show through the white as much. So I'm just kind of doing it very lightly. Light pressure. Go. Make sure I've got everything. Yes. Awesome sauce. All right. Now I am going to use two different brushes. And the reason is because I really need to get a new small brush that has a straight edge. Do I have one? I know I do somewhere. I can't put my hand on. I'll, I'll use this one. This is an angle brush. It's really small. This one would be good for getting in the corners. It's a little frayed. So what I'll do is I'll use um, a regular fine tip also just to kind of get the areas that are tricky. And I'm just going to load up my brush. And I'm just going to paint these letters on. The angle brush allows you to get in the corner with that tip and pull out fairly easily. Hence, they're called angle brushes. You can get in really tight angles with them. Now, if this intimidates you, because for a long time lettering did intimidate me, just takes a while to get more comfortable with it. You can also use your paint pen. Have these Posca paint pens. These are great for lettering. You can literally just trace this out with these. They come in different sizes. So this one is a um, five millimeter. It's kind of more like a Sharpie, a fat Sharpie. Um, It'll make it hard to get into angles, but they also sell them in smaller sizes. Those are great if you just think, you know what, my hand's shaky. I'm not comfortable doing small lettering like that with a paintbrush. Use your paint pens. It will, it will look just as beautiful. No one will ever know unless you tell them.
that B is a little white, so I'm going to go over that again. I may have to do a second coat on each of the letters, but that one's really light. You can hardly see it on the camera, so let me redo that real quick. That's better. All right. That's a little too much. With these small letters, you don't want to load up your brush too, too much. Because then it gets goopy. And goopy paint is bad. I'm still trying to get in my corners and pull them out, pull the paint out of the corners because it's so much smoother that way. part takes a couple minutes too, but that's true of any lettering that you do in your door hangers. That's why sometimes I do like to freehand it, because you can write much quicker than you can paint it. And like I said, if you have a paint pen, nobody knows the difference. So... I'm still using the edge of this angle brush though to make my line straight. I curve my hand as I'm going around. Still use that edge. remember if I highlighted that on my original or not. We'll check in a sec. We're almost done with this one. We got to put some highlights on it and put our tread on, our tires, and then if you live in warm climate you can still use this template for a while. This one's going back on my door. <clears throat> at least until mid-October. Uh, maybe till maybe till the beginning of October. I've got some cute fall stuff I really want to get out. Even if it is still 100 degrees in Georgia. Let's see. This brush is a little frayed, so it's making straight lines a little more challenging. I may go in and touch this up in just a little bit after we get off our live. Just to make it a little more, a little, a pop a little more. A second coat will definitely make this white pop out. One coat may just simply not be enough. That M kind of looks like a McDonald's M. Can't be doing that.
I would definitely go back and add a second coat to this just to make that pop. But you can see it for demonstrative purposes here. You can definitely see that. So now I think we have all of the main stuff painted. So I'm going to hit it with a the hairdryer real quick, then we're going to add our highlights. So to highlight my designs, I always use the uh, I always use the black sharpie. Well, I don't say 99% of the time I use the black sharpie. Sometimes I use my black Posca pen. I just fell in love with the sharpie. It does a great job, and if you do a great job, I'm a creature of habit, so I go back to it. So um, the Posca pens are good too, but the sharpie is my go-to. So I'm going to start up here on the edge and I'm just going to kind of work my way down my design because I do not want to drag my hand through a wet sharpie. That will take a while to correct. This, I'm trying to look for a size on this. This is probably, it's a medium point. So it's like a, um, probably a five millimeter. These are great for outlining your edges. So I'm just going to come straight in, in the design. I'm not right on the edge. I'm just on the inside until I get to my roll bar. And then I'm just going to trace the actual edge of my surfboard all the way down. And this is great where if you see white or you see a color that you went over, this is where you hide those things. Okay? Because you're just kind of going to go over it. I'm going to do the same thing on this side. I'm going to come down. And then when I get to here, now I'm actually tracing the edge of my surfboard all the way down. And my angle is off. Let me do it from this angle. There we go. All right. Now, I'm also going to go ahead and trace my seats here. So this will help me smooth out this line. If you're worried about making straight lines, turn your design. And I'll tell you that, I'll tell you this little trick. I, I say it in every video because I believe it's so important. If you take and you make your wrist and you're trying to draw a straight line with your wrist, moving your wrist, you're going to run into problems with keeping it straight. But if you just pull your arm straight down, like you're taking your arm and you're pulling it toward your, toward your elbow straight down, your lines are so much straighter and it smooths out any anything that looks wobbly, okay? I'm going to do the same thing over here. I'm going to outline my bar. And I'm going to also go on the inside, which you'll be surprised you can actually see it. Okay. I'm hitting my paint. I'm going to go on this just on the inside of my design again. And I'm going to outline. Oops, see, I went down below. Easy fix. It's because I'm using my wrist and not doing exactly what I told you to do. Pull with my arm straight down. Just like that. Smooth that right on out. All right. Now I'm going to come up here and I'm going to come just on the inside. Just like so. And this is where it really comes to life, y'all. I say that all the time, but it really does. These outlines and the highlights just really make it okay. So here I'm going to come on back on the inside, come all the way around, just like so. See how cute? All right, now I'm going to outline the outside of my roll bar all the way down. When I get to my mirror, I'm just smoothing out that line and coming right back inside. And I'm going to do the same thing here. 
I can see where I was kind of wobbly with my paint. But this is where I get to smooth out any rough edges. Okay. And I'm going to do the same thing with the seat here. I'm drawing straight across. Okay. And I realized just now I didn't draw in my four by four details. So let that dry for just a second. I shall hit it with a hair dryer because it's important to make this really pop. I could freehand it. I don't want to do that. I want to show you how I do it with the template. So let me dry this real quick. forgetting something it just felt incomplete so I'm gonna lay these back down here and let me line this back up real quick I just want to show you this I'm going to do really really light it's going over the yellow this is where I'm just going to draw my lines from with uh, my paint pen so I want to line here and here and I'm going to draw a line here I'm going to draw a line here, and I'm just putting on the details of the body here, okay? Um, make sure I can see those real good. Peek, peek. All right. And then I'm also going to go ahead and kind of draw really lightly here to make sure I don't forget these. And I know I've got some up here. We'll hit those with the white pen. So, now then, we got that. That, I knew I was missing something. That's important. All right, so I'm back to my Sharpie. I'm going to go just on the inside of the design again as I come around this curve here. And I'm literally just chase, tracing the inside. Okay? And then for this portion right here, I'm drawing straight down. And for this, I'm drawing straight down as well. See how I didn't move my um, wrist? I moved my arm instead. Huge difference. Huge, huge difference in keeping that line smooth. All right. I'm going to go around my tire. My tire wheel, a wheel cover, whatever this thing is called. I don't really know what it's called. It's the spare tire. I'd know if my husband bought me a Jeep. Hint, hint, hint. I don't even know if he's watching. Just going around. Tracing. On my specific designs, I'm tracing right around the, the actual edge. All the way around. As I say, I can't remember where I started. All right. Now, I'm going to come over here. And draw this straight across here again. I'll draw straight down. And I'm going to draw straight out here. I'm outlining this edge. Again, I'm just on the inside of my wood. This is what's giving it the whimsical look because it's not right on the edge. Okay. And then I want to make sure I draw this line straight down here as well. All right. 
And now I'm going to outline my license plate. Just like so. Mind frame, can you see me? All right. You can really start to see what the finished product is going to look like now. And when I come around the license plate, I'm going to come again just inside. But on the top, I'm right along the edge. And we'll finish up this side here. Cut off a little bit right there. Just kind of go over it again. It is what it is. All right. Now then, now we're going to pull out our white pen. White Sharpies, honestly, just don't love them as much. So I always use my Posca pen. For this pen, this is what I do my highlights with. Um, I found my Sharpie, white Sharpie bleeds a lot, and I don't like that. So I'm going to shake this up really good because I haven't used it in a bit. And now I'm just going to add some highlights just on the inside. A little bit goes a long way with white with highlights. So I'm being, oh, you know what I didn't do? Let me outline these mirrors. Somebody somewhere screaming, what about the mirrors? What about the mirrors? Just like that. Just on the inside. There we go. Now they look like mirrors. All right. <clears throat> I'm going to do a little highlight on my inside of my mirrors. Over here. I'm looking at my original design so I can kind of keep it similar. But you can change this up. If you think you need a little white somewhere, add a little white. This you want to be loose handed. You want it to flow, just be real loose. You don't want to be real hard pressing down. You want this you want the white paint to show up, but <clears throat> it doesn't have to be Press down real hard. Let's see. I'm going to do here. Around my fender here. Around this fender. And I drew a little line there, but I didn't follow my line. So in cases like that, once it dries, I'll hit that with this, um, just this little eraser here to, to erase the uh, graphite mark. I almost said graffiti mark. <laughs> All right, let's see. We want to go across here. We want a little bit of white on this bumper here. And you can see I'm just kind of freehanding that. Now, when I get to my tire tracks, I drew these so that I could just trace them. That's why you trace this dark. And if you think it needs to be gone over a second time, go over it a second time. Just stay on your original lines. Look how cute. All right, let's do this side. I'm having a hard time seeing it, so I'm trying to I'm trying to find the right angle with the sun. Work with me, sun. Sounds like something I say to my 14 year old all the time. Work with me, son. All right, and then we're going to come over and do these last ones here. Where's this one at? Having a hard time seeing it. There we go. There's your tire tracks. All right. I know that we've missed the. We got to add. We got to add a few more things. A couple finishing touches. 
here in my mirrors, I want to add a couple lines. And I'm going to add a couple here. And then I'm going to put a couple at the top here. Just to show that it's a windshield. Okay. And then I'm going to outline my lights here. Remember when I said you were going to hide those pencil marks? This is where you hide those pencil marks on these light colors. You just go straight over the lines. Look how finished that looks. Can't tell at all that five seconds ago you could see your graphite marks. All right, I'm going to go ahead and do my smiley face. I hate my smiley faces. They always look goofy. But, eh, it's all right. I'm going to go around here. I'm going to add a little line around here. And I think our Jeep, oh, no, nope. got to add one more white on my tire wheel. Scared me. I thought that was Sharpie. All right. We're just, I'm just going to kind of curve on the inside here to give it a little. There we go. There is our finished uh, four by four. And guys, I have made several of these. People love them. You can paint them for yourself. You can paint them and sell them. Um, price them determined by your area, but um, a design like this, I wouldn't price it any less than $35, $40. Depending on um, where you live, you can even ask more than that. These are so much fun to paint. They make great gifts. Uh, for more ideas, templates, check out our website. Again, it's thegrouchygoblin.com, and I look forward to seeing you guys next time. Have a great day.